Welcome to St. Joseph the Worker Parish. Today we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time and pray for our young people who will receive the Sacrament of Confirmation this weekend. Our opening antiphon is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate the beautiful graces of God's love in the midst of the world of uncertainty, we come before the Lord and he gives us the power of his Holy Spirit. He gives us his body and blood, soul and divinity in the Holy Eucharist. He nourishes us and strengthens us in our vocation to live a life filled with hope. But for the times that we have turned away from that life, for the times that we have abandoned God's love, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You nourish us in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the Father's right hand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit, coming near and dwelling graciously within us, may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, Yes, she has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year you will be fondling a baby son. the word of the Lord. Thanks.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint matthew glory to you o lord jesus said to his apostles whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I invite the following candidates for the Sacrament of Confirmation to please stand. Aidan Harris, Seneca Labach, Taylor Pedanastro, Joseph Polizzi, Nina Stroman, and Bridget Eumanns. Father Brian Van Fossen, these candidates have carefully prepared for this day under the guidance of their parents and our teachers of Christian doctrine. 
and through the delegation of our bishop, the Most Reverend Joseph C. Bambera, they seek full incorporation into the body of Christ at your hands. It is my pleasure now to present them to you. I assure you they are well prepared and ready to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation. We pray that these candidates and all of us will be faithful to the gospel by spreading and defending the Catholic faith, both by word and by lives of service as true witnesses of Jesus Christ. Candidates, please be seated. Thanks, Mackenzie. It's a tall order, what was just announced. Not the fact that you've prepared for this day, but what you're supposed to do after this day. One of the things that we learned when I was growing up was 101 questions, and one of those questions was, what is the Sacrament of Confirmation? So anybody who's around my age um, or older will immediately say, Nothing, right, because they don't remember um, what that question is. The sacrament of confirmation is a sacrament in which the Holy Spirit comes to you in a strong and perfect way to make you a strong and perfect Christian and a witness or soldier of Jesus Christ. That powerful gift of the Holy Spirit is explained in those words that Mackenzie read, that you're not becoming an adult. Otherwise, after you would have left the church today, you would have been given keys to a car. I know, that would have been cool, but no, nah, that's not going to happen. Or the other thing is you would have been given, you know, bills, because that's part of the joy of adulthood is filling out checks and paying bills all the time. That's not fun either. But when we think about adulthood, the one thing that happens is you become responsible for your actions. That's really crazy talk in a world today that you are responsible for your actions. So proclaiming Christ in word and in deed, in being a gospel that people can see in you and living that gospel message in you is what you're called to be. And it started even before James up here. It started way back when you were baptized. And your parents and your godparents brought you to the church, and they baptized you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then as they baptized you, they took on the responsibility of raising you in the practice of the faith to share with you their gift and knowledge, their way of living the faith. And as the parents shared with you the way that they live the faith, the way that they receive the sacraments of reconciliation, of first of, commu of Holy Communion, the way they live their baptismal promises out, and the way that they continue to share that faith with others, they were the examples for you. James is going to be a beautiful example for all of us, because in a few, few short moments, he's going to take that next step for him to be connected closer to Christ in order to receive him as his parents and godparents received him in the most blessed sacrament. And as he receives him, as you all did way back when, then all of a sudden your strength was renewed from that baptism. You didn't become an adult back then, as none of us became an adult when we were in second grade. But in second grade, we started to realize what was right and what was wrong, what was good and what was not so good what we should do, and what we shouldn't do. For those who don't know, I got a, a little puppy and uh, who's growing exponentially. And one of the things that the little puppy knows all the time is when it's doing something it shouldn't do. Because as soon as it starts doing something it shouldn't do, it turns into a game of keep away. When he's doing something he should do, he just stands there and looks for another treat or something that's positive. Now, if a puppy can do that, as adults who have reason or can understand good from evil or what we should or what we shouldn't do from second grade, don't you think the world would be a better place? It started when we were seven years old, just like this little guy right here. And it kept on growing and growing and growing to where you are at right now. 
looking at this possibility of going off into this larger world, starting in high school and then eventually going off to wherever God leads you. But wherever that is, know that it leads to this beautiful grace of a vocation. God calls us, each and every one of us, to follow his will. Now, what's his will? Well, it's to do good works. One of the parts that Mackenzie mentioned is not only to proclaim the gospel, but to live the gospel. So works of service, as many of us do, in food pantries, with clothing closets, with working with the ASPCA and caring for animals and caring for the poor and the afflicted and the lonely and the downtrodden, by allowing ourselves to go into our homes or into our next-door neighbor's yards and cleaning them up a little bit, serving as firefighters, and allowing that care for others to really take precedence over all things else, to live the gospel and to live as Christ, to take up our crosses and to follow him, as we heard in today's gospel reading. And that beautiful way of living leads us to be an example for others and leads us not only to be an example for them, but also to have maybe a person look at us and say, hey, that man, that woman is amazing and so amazing that I am going to risk it all and I'm going to ask them to go out with me and to marry them, I pray. And the Gabriels are here after 50 years of holy matrimony to celebrate that one time, and I don't remember who went after who first, and kept on going after each other. But within that one time, that one person said, yeah, I'll go out on a date with you. Yes, I'll accept that ring from you. Yes. I will marry you. And 50 years later, they are still married. And I'm sure it was all holiness and bliss and no problems whatsoever, being the two holy uh, man and woman of God that they are. Um, never fought or anything, I'm sure, because, you know, confession. Anyway, so, but within all of that, they got through it all, not on their own, but together. Even if called to a priesthood, today we had three men say yes to God by saying, I will be priests in this diocese of Scranton. And as they stood before the Lord saying that yes to God, they realized that they weren't going to be priests alone, but rather their way of growing in holiness was going to come from their prayer life, from the community that they live in, and the community that they celebrate the Holy Mass with. That is where holiness comes from for priests. And it's also where it comes from for religious, as they go and serve the poor and the needy in profound ways. Maybe some of them are called to religious life in the cloister. That doesn't mean they're removed from the world. All that means is that they pray for the world, and they have a lot to pray for. All of these moments call us, as a family of faith, to live that faith and to accept responsibility for our actions. Whether it be the simple responsibilities of, you know, I got into a fight with my brothers or my sisters, or, you know, I did all these things within school that were great and wonderful, or whatever it is, to the more complex things of our world today that we're seeing as we are trying to understand where people are coming from when to apologize, when to correct, when to allow the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead us in points of understanding, knowledge, wisdom, right judgment, to have reverence for each other, to be filled with the power of God, with the fear of the Lord, and to recognize and encourage that we are called to stand up for the weak and the vulnerable and those who have no one to pray for them and to those who have no one to back them. To be of service to God and each other and to live the gospel message. Perfectly, I wish that was the case. Again, we would be in a much perfect world. None of us do it perfectly, but that's why there's always hope. When we heard from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, Christ is not dead. He's not on a cross. He's not in a grave. 
He's alive. He's risen from the dead. And he lives not only with the Father in heaven, but he lives in us through the power of his Holy Spirit. We, the body of Christ. We could look back on the past and we could bemoan all those struggles and trials and we could not forgive and we could hold anger and we could do all of these things. That's not going to get us to 50 years of marriage and it's not going to get us very far in our world. If we allow ourselves to forgive, to reconcile, and to then move forward in the life of Jesus, then we gain a strength that is beyond our own. That's when the impossible becomes possible. And that's when life comes into the world. Life within our own hearts, life that heals, life that breathes. One of the most beautiful sounds since we've come back are little ones speaking to God, as that little one's doing so well. It's beautiful. It was so hard to be in a quiet church. Adults, they tend to be quiet, unless they're snoring. But kids, you know when they're there, and it's awesome. That's the beautiful grace of life. You know when it's there. It brings joy to your heart. It brings happiness into the world. It gives us strength and something to hope for. So my brothers and sisters, my confirmandi, my first communicant, and the beautiful couple of 50 years of marriage, may the life of Christ, the love of God, and the peace of that Holy Spirit always remain in your heart so that your lives may fill, be filled with life and goodness and hope. And may you share that life with others, that goodness and that hope with everyone you meet to overcome the darkness of sin that is so strongly present in our world. And that hatred, racism, bigotry, anger, killing in the womb and outside may cease and love may truly be lived. Would the candidates for confirmation please stand? My dear brothers and sisters, the gift of the Holy Spirit which you are about to receive will be a spiritual seal by which you will be conformed to Christ and will be made more fully members of his church. For Christ himself, anointed by the Holy Spirit in the baptism he received from John, was sent forth for the work of his ministry to pour out on the earth the fire of that same Spirit. Therefore, you who are already baptized will now receive the power of his Spirit and be signed with his cross on your foreheads. And so you must always bear witness to his passion and resurrection before the world, so that your manner of life, as the Apostle says, may be in every place the pleasing fragrance of Christ. His mystical body, which is the Church, the people of God, receives from him diverse graces, which the same Holy Spirit distributes to individuals for the building up of that body in unity and love. Be living members of this church, therefore, and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, seek to serve all people like Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. And now, before you receive the Holy Spirit, call to mind the faith which you have professed in baptism, or which your parents and godparents professed with the church. And so, if your faith makes you ready to please respond with all here present, I do. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. 
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. My dear friends, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to conform them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, for we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eliza, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Maria, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Confirmation. St. Kateri, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. and be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God, the Almighty Father, to be of one mind in our prayer, just as hope, faith, and charity, which proceed from this Holy Spirit, are one. For these, his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit is confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the bishops, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the Church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that all people, 
who have one maker and father, may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of courage to answer the call to priesthood and religious life, fidelity within married life, and chastity within all walks of life, so that love may truly be lived, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military personnel who are in harm's way this day, for our veterans who have served in the military, for our firefighters, police, and first responders, and all those who watch over our communities and our world, that they may, through the power of the Holy Spirit, make right decisions that lead to peaceful resolutions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died. That they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our altar is being prepared, our offertory hymn is Take Up Your Cross. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him, as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And we heath your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We leave them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also, Lord, your servants reborn in baptism, who you have been pleased to confirm by bestowing the Holy Spirit in your mercy. Keep safe in them your grace. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, power, and the glory, the glory are, are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, but only, only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed.
As we come to receive Christ in a spiritual communion, our communion antiphon is at that first Eucharist. Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few short moments. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. and Mrs. Gabriel to please come forward. Edward and Audrey, on the anniversary of that celebration at which you joined your lives in an unbreakable bond through the sacrament of holy matrimony, you now offer intent to renew before the Lord the promises you made to one another. Turn to the Lord always in prayer that these vows may be strengthened by divine grace. And so on the day of your marriage, I ask you to turn and face each other and to join your right hands and to repeat after me. Blessed are you, Lord, for in your goodness we have taken each other 
and matrimonial love. In good times and in the bad times, you have stood lovingly by our side. Help us, we pray, to remain faithful in our love for one another so that we may be true witnesses to the covenant you made with all mankind. May the Lord keep you safe all the days of your life. May he be your comfort in adversity, your support in prosperity, and may he fill your home with his blessings. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I can see your left hands where your rings are. Increase and sanctify, Lord, the love of your servants, Edward and Audrey, who once gave each other these rings as signs of faithfulness. May they always grow in this sacrament of holy matrimony, for we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our brothers and sisters, please stand. If you will extend with me your right hands as we ask God's blessing upon this young couple. Let us call upon the mercy of God, the Almighty Father, who in his most provident plan willed that the history of salvation be signified in marital love and grace. We praise you, O God. We bless you, creator of all things, who in the beginning made man and woman, that they might form a communion of life and love, and also give you thanks for graciously blessing the family life of your servants so that it might present an image of Christ's union with the church. Therefore, look with kindness upon them today, and as you have sustained their communion amid joys and struggles, renew their marriage covenant each day, increase their charity, and strengthen in them the bond of peace, so that together with the circle of their children that surrounds them, they may forever enjoy your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we give this young couple our support? You may kiss the bride if you'd like. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you at, by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless, blameless and gather it as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. As we come to the end of this Holy Mass, please come forward to the stations at the altar railing to receive the Blessed Sacrament. <laughs>